The planet's drowning in plastic. Over 400 million tons of waste generated every year, choking oceans and poisoning ecosystems. But in the heart of China, something unexpected is fighting back. Endless bamboo forests stretch across the southern provinces. And what happens next is nothing short of remarkable. These humble stalks move straight into factories where lasers carve, robots assemble, and automated production lines work around the clock. What emerges isn't just another eco-product. It's the future. Bamboo straws that replace millions of plastic ones. Toothbrushes that biodegrade instead of sitting in landfills for centuries. Building materials strong enough to replace steel and concrete, even charcoal that burns cleaner than coal. Each year, millions of these products flood global markets, generating massive profits and positioning China at the forefront of the green economy. But here's what nobody talks about. How did a plant that grows in dirt become the backbone of cutting-edge sustainable technology? Let's talk numbers, because they tell a story most people miss. Every year, the world generates over 400 million tons of plastic waste. China sits at the center of this environmental storm, facing some of the planet's most intense pollution pressure. That's exactly why bamboo isn't just another crop here. It's a strategic weapon in the fight for a sustainable future. Right now, China controls over 6 million hectares of bamboo forests. That's billions upon billions of individual stalks blanketing the southern provinces. The scale is almost impossible to comprehend. And the economic impact. The bamboo industry generates more than $57 billion in value and employs over 17 million people. We're not talking about a niche market anymore. This is industrial scale transformation. From a plant that was once considered ordinary, bamboo has evolved into the engine of a green economy that's reducing dependence on plastic while cementing China's position as the global leader in sustainable manufacturing. The numbers don't lie. This is the new gold rush, and it's growing in the ground. But bamboo's story isn't all sunshine and sustainability. There's a chapter most people don't know about, and it's dark. During World War II, stories emerged from the Pacific Theater Allied Prisoners of War, including Americans and Filipinos, reported something horrifying. Accounts claim that Japanese forces used bamboo as an instrument of pain, tying captives above young shoots and letting the plant's rapid growth do the rest. The details were gruesome. Bamboo can grow up to three feet in a single day, and those razor-sharp tips don't stop for anything. Some survivors spoke of bodies found impaled, the shoots having grown straight through. Now here's where it gets murky. There's limited solid evidence to back up these claims. Historians debate whether this actually happened on any significant scale or if it became wartime propaganda. What we do know is that a 2008 investigation by Mythbusters proved the concept works. Bamboo shoots penetrated ballistic gelatin, which matches human tissue, in just three days. So the question remains, was this a real method of wartime cruelty or just an exaggerated horror story that took on a life of its own? Either way, it's a stark reminder of how versatile bamboo really is. But here's the twist. That same plant, once tied to stories of suffering, is now on a completely different path. From weapon to solution. From death to life. The transformation couldn't be more extreme. In the misty mountains of southern China, the real work begins before the sun rises. The roar of power saws echoes through bamboo groves that seem to stretch forever. Workers navigate steep terrain, targeting stalks that have reached their peak, some towering 15 to 20 meters high. These aren't your grandfather's hand axes anymore. Modern chainsaws slice through bamboo in seconds, each cut precise and efficient. One worker can bring down up to 150 stalks in a single hour. That's more than double what manual labor could achieve, and the quality stays consistent. After each stalk falls, crews immediately trim the base and cut away the nodes. It's a small detail, but critical. Those cuts prevent water from pooling and ensure new shoots can regenerate without disease. The forest becomes a living assembly line, humans and machines working in perfect sync, extracting resources without destroying the source. Now here's a question. If someone offered you 50 bucks, would you spend a day out here with a power saw, cutting bamboo in the humid heat? For the workers, it's not some adrenaline-fueled challenge. It's Thursday. It's routine. But don't mistake routine for easy. This is backbreaking work that keeps the entire supply chain moving. And without it, none of what comes next would be possible. Once the bamboo hits the ground, the clock starts ticking. These stalks need to move fast, and in terrain this rugged old-school methods still work best. 
pack horses navigate the steep slopes, hauling massive bundles that would take hours to drag by hand. It's a combination of ancient logistics and modern efficiency. When the bamboo reaches collection points, heavy-duty trucks take over, loading up and heading toward the factories. But before any of this becomes a product, it needs serious preparation. Workers drill small holes into each stalk. Why? Water absorption. The bamboo gets submerged in cool mountain streams, washing away dirt and forest debris. Then comes the scrubbing. Sticky resin and bacteria cling to the surface, and if left alone, they'd rot the material from the inside out. After a thorough cleaning, the stalks are laid out under intense sunlight. This isn't just drying, it's strategic moisture reduction that makes bamboo nearly immune to termites and decay. These steps might seem basic, almost primitive, but they're the foundation of quality control. Skip one, and the entire batch is compromised. Once the moisture content drops to the ideal range, the bamboo is ready for the next level. Automated cutting systems take over, processing up to 300 stalks per hour. Blades slice with millimeter precision, creating uniform sections that are primed for transformation. This is where the raw plant material starts becoming something else entirely. This is where nature meets industry. Bamboo's been used in construction for thousands of years. But what's happening now is on another level entirely. Mature stalks arrive at factories already treated, stripped of impurities, and stabilized. The next step is where things get serious. These stalks get fed into hydraulic presses that exert 500 tons of force. That's the weight of an entire freight train crushing down on bamboo strips, compressing them into solid uniform boards. Under that kind of pressure, bamboo doesn't just hold its shape, it transforms. The natural fibers lock together, creating a material with mechanical strength that rivals rare hardwoods. And it's not just strong, it's beautiful. The natural grain remains visible, giving each board a unique organic look. From there, automated cutting lines take over industrial blades sliced with surgical precision, tailoring each piece to exact architectural specifications. Edges get smoothed, surfaces get refined, any roughness is eliminated. The result is a product that's visually stunning and built to last. These bamboo boards can withstand heavy loads, resist extreme weather, and handle daily wear without breaking down. Architects and builders are taking notice. Bamboo scaffolding is already used on high-rise construction sites across Asia. Now entire structures are being built with bamboo as the primary material. From forest to city, the cycle is complete, and bamboo proves that sustainability doesn't mean compromise. It means evolution. But bamboo's transformation doesn't stop at construction. In another corner of the factory, fire takes over. This is where bamboo becomes charcoal, a clean burning biofuel that could replace coal and traditional firewood in millions of homes. The process is intense. Pre-treated bamboo tubes, stacked vertically, are loaded into massive kilns. Each kiln can hold 200 to 300 pieces, arranged with precision to allow heat to circulate evenly. Once loaded, workers seal the kiln mouth with stone and cement, leaving only small vents for gas release. Then the fire is lit. Inside, temperatures climb to between 600 and 700 degrees Celsius. At this range, something remarkable happens. The cellulose and lignin inside the bamboo break down, leaving behind pure carbon cores. This isn't a quick process. The bamboo stays in the kiln for five to seven days straight. When the doors finally open, what emerges is glossy, black, and dense bamboo charcoal. Each kiln produces two to three tons, enough to supply thousands of households with energy. But the applications go way beyond fuel. Bamboo charcoal is used in water purification systems, pulling toxins and impurities out of drinking water. It's used as a deodorizer, absorbing smells naturally without chemicals. Cosmetic companies use it in face masks and skincare products. Traditional medicine incorporates it for its antibacterial properties. From fire, bamboo gains a second life, and this second life might be even more valuable than the first. While bamboo charcoal shows what fire can do, there's another side to this story. One that's simpler, smaller, but just as revolutionary. Bamboo straws. They're made from young bamboo, usually two to three years old. At that age, the stalks are strong but naturally slim, perfect for cutting into uniform tubes. Workers select the best pieces, slice them into even sections, and clear out the nodes to create smooth, hollow passages. That's the foundation. From there, the sections are arranged in trays and dried at 70 to 80 degrees Celsius. This step locks in durability while keeping that natural golden color intact. After drying, every piece gets polished inside, 
and out. No rough edges, no splinters, just smooth, glossy surfaces that feel good against your lips. Then comes sterilization. The straws are washed with sterilized water, eliminating any remaining bacteria or impurities. A final drying phase at lower temperatures ensures they're ready for packaging. Some factories even use lasers to engrave logos directly onto the straws, giving them a branded premium look. Finally, they're packed into eco-friendly cartons, ready to ship. Here's the question, though. Would you pay a dollar for a reusable bamboo straw instead of a few cents for a disposable plastic one? It's not just about the money. It's about what happens after you're done using it. The plastic straw sits in a landfill for 200 years. The bamboo straw? It breaks down naturally, returning to the earth in months. That's the real difference, and millions of people are starting to make that choice. Bamboo straws bring nature to your drink, but bamboo spoons and forks take it to your plate. Unlike the traditional handmade utensils of the past, today's production is fully automated. Shaping, surface treatment, sterilization, drying. Every step is controlled by machines to ensure consistency, safety, and quality. Each bamboo spoon is designed to feel solid in your hand, smooth against your tongue, and practical for everyday use. Even something as simple as eating pasta with a bamboo fork becomes a different experience. There's a connection to the material, a reminder that not everything needs to be plastic. Once the utensils are finished, the packaging process begins. In some factories, workers still wrap each piece by hand, adding a layer of care and quality control. But more advanced facilities have moved to smart sensor robots. These machines detect each utensil, pack them into small paper bags, and arrange everything into shipping cartons without a single human touch. It's efficient, scalable, and keeps the eco-friendly commitment intact. Bamboo utensils aren't just functional. They're proof that bamboo's ability to regenerate and serve humanity is practically limitless. From forests to kitchens, the cycle continues, and every spoon, every fork, every plate tells the same story. Sustainability doesn't have to be complicated. Sometimes, it's as simple as choosing wood over plastic. Bamboo's versatility takes one more unexpected turn. Bamboo salt. This isn't your average seasoning. It's the result of bamboo, earth, and fire coming together in a process that's been refined over generations. It starts with fresh bamboo stalks, about three years old. Workers cut them into sections and fill each hollow tube with natural sea salt. Then both ends are sealed with yellow clay. The clay isn't just a plug, it acts as a protective shield, locking in the salt's purity while filtering out impurities during the firing process. The sealed tubes are stacked inside a massive furnace, and the temperature is cranked up to between 800 and 1000 degrees Celsius. At this heat, the bamboo burns away completely, the clay cracks and falls off. What's left is a hardened, darkened block of salt that's absorbed minerals from both the bamboo and the clay. But this is only the beginning. The salt is cooled, broken into pieces, packed back into fresh bamboo, sealed again, and fired once more. Each cycle pushes the salt through another trial by fire, shedding impurities and concentrating valuable minerals like calcium, potassium, and iron. Some producers repeat this process up to nine times. When the final firing is complete, the salt block is allowed to cool fully. Workers break it apart with hammers, then grind it into fine, uniform crystals. In every grain, you taste more than just the ocean. You taste the minerals of bamboo and earth. The flavor is fuller, richer, more complex. And beyond taste, bamboo salt is prized for its health benefits. Traditional medicine uses it for digestive support, anti-inflammatory properties, and detoxification. It's a product that marries ancient wisdom with modern production techniques. And it's just one more example of how bamboo refuses to be limited by expectations. Behind bamboo's simple, rustic appearance lies a technological journey that most people never see. From the moment a stalk is selected in the forest, to the second it becomes a straw, a spoon, a building board, or biochar. Every step is controlled with precision. Human skill works hand-in-hand -hand with modern machinery, creating a production system that's both efficient and sustainable. China has turned this humble resource into a green industrial powerhouse pumping out millions of eco-friendly products every single year. But here's the question nobody's asking loudly enough. Can bamboo actually keep up as global demand skyrockets and more countries look to replace plastic, timber, and steel with sustainable alternatives? Will the supply hold? Or are we setting up another resource crisis just with a different plant? Bamboo grows fast, sure, 
but it's not infinite. Responsible harvesting, replanting, and forest management will determine whether this green revolution lasts or burns out. So what do you think? Can bamboo meet the world's needs without repeating the mistakes of the past? Drop your thoughts below. And if you want to dive deeper into the secrets of material crafting and regeneration, hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications. Because the next story might just change how you see the world around you.